Hello and welcome back to XYZ. The time has come to create another audio visualizer. This time we are generating some procedural spirals out of a single Bezier curve. We then convert the curves to meshes on the fly to use the vertex colors for some shader effects. So let's hope this isn't spiraling out of control. So right away we split our UI and we head over into the video sequencer. We add a sound file that we want to work with. I will drop a link in the comments below with a good resource where you can get uh, free audio files for YouTube and streaming purposes. Then we head on over into animation nodes, create a new node tree, and we start out with a Bezier curve. And we switch that over to a poly one. So it's just a straight line with two points. And in animation nodes, we start out with an evaluate. We get our Bezier curve in here. And we also want a sound spectrum node. And we need the time info node to feed the frame into the sound spectrum. And of course, we need to load in our sound file. We bring in a 3D viewer node and let's look at the matrices that our evaluate spline node outputs. We want to switch that to range count and reduce that to 10 for now. We can always increase the amount later. The same for the sound spectrum. It's always easier to work with uh, less, less points in the beginning and in the end just increase it when you're done with the setup. So right now our matrices are pointing all upward and we want to curl them around so we can generate a spiral out of our straight curve. And for that, we need a loop. And we don't just want to create a single spiral, but uh, multiple spirals, depending on the count of our sound spectrum. So. Every part of the spectrum we generate should have its own spiral. And I think I haven't touched on the loop node yet in animation nodes. The difference between an iterator and a parameter is the iterator will change in every iteration of the loop and the parameter will stay the same in every iteration. Let's run the loop. We see that we have an iteration counter on our subprogram node. And the moment we bring in, for instance, the float list, the iteration counter is now gone because the amount of iterations are depending on our float list. So the float list uh, controls the amount of iterations now. When we look at the iterations, and of course we have to link in a float list, so animation notes knows what float list we want to work with. It tells us there are uh, this, this loop will run for 10 iterations and our matrix list we can bring in as a parameter and this way 
our loop will be used to duplicate our splines in the end. In this loop, we want to generate a spline list. And since this loop will only duplicate our splines, we need a second loop where we actually generate the spiral. And here we bring in the matrix list as an iterator and our float value. It's just a single float value. This will be the spectrum. We can link that up. And out of this loop, we want to generate a matrix list. And let's just pass the matrices out uh, without doing anything right now. And right here, we can run a decompose on our matrix list and then just use the vectors the position vectors to generate a spline out of let's link in our matrices here Then bring in an object output. And we create an actual spline that is now showing up. But we are not doing anything yet to the matrices, so we head over into the matrix section and bring in an offset and this will have some advanced node settings since we only want to work with a single matrix that is passed into this loop we deactivate the use matrix list and we also want to work in local axes and we duplicate that and one will be for the rotation and the other for the location and for the location one, we bring in a combined vector node. And we want to offset by our spectrum. And we want to offset the C position. And right away we see that our splines are offsetting based on our spectrum. And when I play the animation it will change based on the music but right now we are not generating a spiral yet and for that, we have our offset matrix node with the rotation active. And right here, we need an Euler. So we go to the rotation section and we say combine Euler. 
and we want to work with degrees. And we bring in a math node that we will use to generate our uh, rotation values. So we start out with a division. So since we want a full rotation, we start out with 360, which is 360 degrees in this case. Since we will feed that into uh, the X rotation. And we will divide by the amount of our iterations. And then multiply that by the index. And let's see first what value this will output. So we are generating a float list. And this float list will come out of this loop. And right here we can grab a viewer node. Let's get that down here. And we see we are generating values between 0 and 324 degrees. So it's not creating a full rotation as of right now. Since we are dividing by too much so we have to reduce the iteration in this case so i'll just duplicate my math node set it to subtract then grab the iterations and i will subtract one and when i feed that in suddenly we are moving from a rotation of zero degrees to a full rotation of 360 degrees. So depending on the range of your values that you need, you either subtract or add to your index or iteration to get to the, to the right values. You have to keep that in mind that you might have to subtract or add something to your index or iteration. And when we link that in, we see that now our spiral curls around. But we are not done yet since I want this fall off to go towards zero depending on where we are in on the length of our curve. So in the beginning and in the end it should be zero and in the center it should be a full one. And we can also achieve that again with some math. So we divide again by our iterations and multiply by the index. And let's get a float list again so we can look at the values. But since we are working with a fall off now, I want this to be in the zero and one range and move from zero up to one and then back to zero again. And in this case, we are generating the wrong values. We can get around that by grabbing another math node and setting it to sign. So we are using the sign function now. If you want to hear more about this function, I will drop a link to a video of mine where I explain 
vector math and I also touch a little bit on the sine, cosine and tangent functions in the end of that video. So if you're interested, you might want to watch that. And since sine on and cosine functions work with radians, we need to work with the number pi. And right away we see we are moving from 0 up to 1 but then we are not yet reaching zero again. So we need another subtraction node. And we grab our iterations and use that for the division. And it seems like we are not reaching a full one, but that is because we are not having enough points on this spline. So when we increase that, we see now we're going from zero to one and back to zero. But we are ending up with a float value and we need a fall off. And animation notes has us covered we can just grab the constant fall off node. When we link that in, we see that our start and end points are now all at the same position and the spiral only extends in the middle section. So let's move to our other loop and finish that up. Because right now all of our spirals are rotated the same way and we can still change that by bringing in an offset matrix node in this loop. And we set that to rotation as well. And with this node, we want to use a matrix list since we are passing a matrix list out of our other loop. And we want to work in global axes. And right here, we will do the same thing as we did in the other loop by just dividing 360 degrees by our iterations. And then multiply that by the index and we need another combined Euler node and we again want to rotate around the x-axis and we want to use degrees and also make sure we are looking at the values this will generate to see if this is what we want. So we're going from zero to 324 degrees. And in this case, that is exactly what I want since I don't want to move from zero to 360 degrees because at that point, two splines will again share the same rotation. And in this case, I don't want that. And one more thing that we might want to do, since we see that they're a bit shaggy, our spirals, and we can smooth that by bringing in a smooth path here 
node. And we set that to 0.33. And this way they will get nicely smooth. Let's get rid of the 3D viewer node. And let's reduce the thickness of our splines. And when we play the animation, it should follow the sound. And we see that the start and end points are rather straight. And that comes from two little points on our evaluate spline node. When we increase that, it becomes more round. But we definitely don't want to overdo this since more points also means more computation that needs to be done by animation nodes in Blender, so it can slow down your scene quite a bit. And one more thing I'd like to have in here is a map range node. because this way we can uh, control the shape of our spiral and even use the interpolation to do what, what we want him to do. It's a bit easier to shape them this way. So this way we can control the value of our spectrum and map it into a more manageable value. So there's one more thing I'd like to do, and that is instead of outputting this as splines, I'd like to output this as a mesh since a mesh can have vertex colors and I can use that vertex colors for some shader effects and I can't do that with a spline. So we get rid of the object and the node and in the mesh section we have a mesh from spline node but we see that our loop outputs a spline list and this node takes only a single spline in so we will need another loop and let me disable the always execution in animation nodes since this will get a bit sluggish and it's a bit annoying to work with. So we pass our spline list in here. And with this node, we can control uh, the size is pretty much the bevel depth and the bevel resolution is also something that we might want to increase, but We'll see that in a second. So we pass a mesh list out of here. And then, of course, we have to run our new loop. And we create a new object output, this time for our meshes. They will be joined automatically. And we see that it is 
quite quite sharp as of right now and when we increase the bevel resolution it becomes more round and right here we can control the thickness of our meshes and one more thing that we can do is in the mesh section on the tools there is a shade object smooth node so that way we can control if we want it flat shaded or smooth shaded and since we are already working with meshes here we can now uh, inset, inset vertex color layer control our vertex colors that way So we go over in the shader editor and we want a new material for our mesh. And right now everything will be white since we're not changing the vertex colors yet. We are just setting them to pure white. So right in this loop, we rename that. We also want our spectrum values because those will be driving our vertex colors so we pass in a float list and we want to combine a color And before we pass on the spectrum value, I'd like to run that not through an evaluate node, but through a map range node. This way we still have control of how we want our spectrum to be mapped into the zero and one range. like we did with the position offset but let's put that down here get it out of the way and i'd like to not only use uh, the red channel but we can use the green channel as well to give every separate mesh a unique vertex color can again use the divide and multiply for that so we start out with a value of one we divide by our iterations and then we multiply by the index and let's look at the values we get out of this real quick this does look uh, pretty good already but we're not getting to a full white value with this 
So we grab another math note and let's subtract one. from our iterations and this way we go from zero to one and we hit the full white and full black and we can pass that into the green channel and now we can create a nice shader with this setup that behaves exactly as we want it to. And of course, we can still change how, how much we want to wrap our spiral around our initial curve. So we can just increase this however we want. And since this is procedural, it will change depending on what we do. We can also offset the way our falloff works by just multiplying our pi value. So we can link in 2 pi, which will generate this for us. And you can create some very cool effects with this. And here we have our beautiful spiral visualizer that came out of a single straight Bezier curve. You could now clean up this node tree and expose all the important values in a master node group, so you don't have to search the whole node tree when you want to change the behavior of the spiral. I have a tutorial on my channel where I explain this process and I will link this on screen right now. Thank you so much for watching, like, share, subscribe and I would love to see you all next time. Happy blending!